We are on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange on this Friday to talk about the markets with Jim Cramer. And Jim, it is Jobs Friday. Yeah, look, this was a remarkable number. A lot of people like to look through numbers, but I did a, a study of this and Get Rich Carefully, my last book, where I looked at every single employment number basically since we started Action Alerts. And it's the most important indicator of where the market's going to go. Uh, and you can't look through it. If it's a strong number, it's good. And if it's a weak number, it tends to be bad unless the Fed is in a tightening cycle where it's already tightened to a point where it's overdone. We're certainly not there. So uh, take it with uh, the notion, I have a piece this morning on Real Money mm -hmm. saying, it was just posted saying, hey, listen, bears, the reason what makes me more optimistic than you is because we have great employment growth and we're gonna have very good earnings. And I don't know, great employment with, with not a lot of inflation is allows this, the central banks to do what they want uh, and that means raise rates, which means we're gonna be led by banks and if we're led by banks, then that's a good economy, good market. And your real money piece, unbelievable about buying the dips with respect to Oracle. Thank you, I mean, look, Oracle goes from 46 to 52 on a great quarter. It then pulls back to 48. Are, is that bearish? In the environment that we have, where people think that stocks going lower are therefore companies doing badly, that's why dip buying works. When a stock goes down, it doesn't mean the company's doing worse, it means that the environment has changed. And that's why I think Oracle's a buy, and there's a, there's a dozen Oracles out there I could give you. Nike, I mentioned that, Nike. Yeah. Important distinction. All right, the legal battles between Apple and Qualcomm continue. David Faber's going on about this, and you know, he's he's really saying, look, it's an existential, whenever you hear that word, you always get really nervous, existential conflict for Qualcomm. It's either do or die, and I don't like to be in a situation where that's the case. Those who really want to play Qualcomm, you know, you got to do it with 50, you know, uh, you know, some far out 50 strike call. Uh, I think that Apple is a, you own Apple, you don't trade it, and this is more reason. I think Apple's got the upper hand here. Mm. All right, Action Alerts Plus holding Facebook. There was a note out from Societe Generale saying that uh, basically expectations are a little bit high here. Yeah, I, I don't know where they get that. I mean, you know, you stick your finger in the air. The fact is, is that there's a note out today about Twitter and about how that, that you know, monthly average users, you know, no growth, uh, things may not be that great. We know that Snap, uh, you know, turned out right out of the shoot wasn't that great. Well, where's everybody going? Yahoo? No, I mean, if you have a one, if you have basically a monopoly uh, on Facebook, on uh, on video, on Instagram. I mean, honestly, when I talk to people, they say, listen, I'm really worried about Facebook. I say, why? Well, because there's this company, Instagram, and it's killing it. Yeah, hey, <laughs> wake up. That's Instagram, Facebook. So, I mean, I, I, I just think that when you hear that kind of channel check, it's been so wrong so many times, you have to see the number. I mean, you know, people cannot make channel checks because Facebook's very tight-lipped. I have, like, I do a lot of stuff with Facebook. They won't give you any information. So I don't know where this guy's getting his information. <laughs> All right, Palo Alto Networks was upgraded at City. Yeah, that was a good call. I, look, the Mondelez thing is jarring. Um, you know, it wasn't Mondelez's fault. We know from these articles that I do like Mondelez. I like the snack business. I think that the five-year plan to raise margins is fantastic. Uh, Irene Roosevelt doing a good job to get margins up in a slow uh, growth environment. Uh, I, I think that Palo Alto is the natural call that people have to give. They'll do FireEye in order to be able to find out who did it. Fortinet is the one who actually it plays a little more offense, but Palo Alto is the well-known name, and I, I think that the upgrade makes a lot of sense, and I think that Palo Alto had a really good quarter last. Another good example of what I talk about, how everyone keeps saying, Jim, there's so much multiple expansion, and you're dancing, like Ray Dalio said, we're dancing. Wait a second, Palo Alto reported a great number, and then the stock went up, and then the stock's done nothing. But Palo Alto's good, and, and it's got a new cycle coming, so I like Palo Alto. And you had Irene Rosenfeld on Mad Money last month. Yeah, I mean, look, Irene, I mean, here's the problem. It's food. And there's an article that was so great today in the Wall Street Journal about food. Uh, the, the shelf space is no longer the moat because you can get a lot of stuff online. Uh, Irene's done a remarkable job in the following way. She has taken costs out, costs out, costs out, costs out. And now I think she can play offense overseas. I think snacks are, going to, are, are, are starting to do better because people like to snack now. That's a secular positive in the economy. And how do we know that? Look at what, what Indra Nui's done with PepsiCo. I mean, does anyone ever notice how great that stock is? That's big action alert. Uh, on stop trading, you talked about Kimberly Clark. Yeah, uh, when, uh, you know, th there's an analyst, Wendy, Wendy Nicholson, who, who's really quite good. And she was saying, look, if it weren't for the fact that Kimberly could be taken over, she would be going to a sell on it. Now, Goldman had a sell on Kimberly like at 100. It was really dead wrong. Uh, uh, Kimberly is a great American company. Uh, and the idea that they have, they can't, that the growth is peaked there is, 
always uh, makes me think, well, wait a second, if that's the case, then maybe Kraft Heinz should buy it. <laughs> so what happens is, is that she's saying, there's a bid underneath for a lot. I, I, I like the piece, and I like this. The reason I gave it was kind of metaphorical. There's a bid underneath for all these companies, whether it be Campbell's, whether it be General Mills, whether whether it be honestly, um, you could say that it is Mondelez. Where if the stocks really went down, someone's going to buy them, and, and that's what the piece was about. And Kimberly, like she, listen, I tell you to sell it, but someone might buy it. Wow. I mean, a really interesting moment for the packaged food and uh, for the consumer packaged goods companies. All right, moving on. Warren Buffett, Berkshire Hathaway, buying energy future partners. He's getting it cheap. I, you know, I've been recommending his stock since 19, what, 83? <laughs> and I reiterate my buy. And that's it. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Jim, we wanted to talk about a few things. Next week, Monday, we have our trading strategies yeah, roundtable. You know, and I look forward to listening to you in that, that great group, and you're doing a remarkable job, and I get Thank some you. really good ideas about it. Uh, people don't talk about how, uh, you know, we, you have to have fixed income, you have to have gold, you have to have, uh, you know, or commodities. You know, you really want to have foreign, and that roundtable encompasses all the things for very sophisticated investors. It's the only thing I know, on or offline, that you can get. Should cost thousands of dollars to be to listen. It's really good. All right, that's Monday at 11 a.m. And then the big thing next week is, of course, your AAP call on yeah, Wednesday. and I'm going to explain um, uh, a lot of our, I like to explain some of what, of what we've been doing, and particularly a new, a, a new initiation that is so, so important. Also go over our, our uh, ratings, our, our weight and our weightings. Um, you know, I talked last night on Mad Money about how there's some things you always wish you hadn't done. I have been, at, you know, I've been adamant, can't do oil yet, Adamant that you uh, you know you got to be careful with Snap One. You got to be careful with retail, which is Walgreens. July 11th, remember, is Amazon Prime Day. Yes. Those have been the, the holes in the lineup, uh, and I will I address the holes every single time because I think if you uh, can control your losses, your winners run. And oil's been terrible, um, retail's been terrible, but the others have been good. And this is such a great opportunity to get your insight beyond 140 characters. Well, yeah, <laughs> I mean we you know I go I spend. I spend out, it's probably the thing I spend the most time on of anything I do uh, in my business life right now. I spend gardening, it's different. <laughs> That's this weekend.